In the small town of Tuxville, Timmy is raring to use his new computer. Will he end up with Windows or Linux? Hey Timmy, are you ready to find out? Hey, uh, could, could you stop for a second? Yeah, that'd be great. Um, anyways, are you ready to see which OS suits you better? Oh, wow, that is really weird. We're not keeping this in, right? Timmy's gonna install Windows. Oh, oh my fucking god. <coughs> Alright, here's how it's gonna go down. One, I'm gonna be installing Windows 11 and Linux Mint 22 for this comparison, as these are recent and popular representations of both operating systems respectively. Two, both of them are gonna be contained in virtual machines, specifically QEMU and KVM, and three, both of these motherfuckers are gonna use eight gigabytes of RAM and six of my CPU cores. And our man Timmy is off to the races installing his windows. Now keep this in mind, as you can see the actual installation starts at 250 and let's see how long this takes. So that's about 9 minutes for installation give or take, it's not the worst thing in the world but it's still something to consider. To set up your device using a screen reader. Turn on narrator by pressing Windows plus Control plus Enter. Now your username, Timmy. Uh, changing it to, okay, it's something a little cooler. Uh, all right. I don't really, I don't really get kids these days, but you know, Timmy's just a young lad. And of course, here's the obligatory part of the installation where Microsoft's embedded spyware comes in, giving you the illusion that you can disable it when, in reality, many services are going to be running regardless of, you know, how much you tinker with these settings, so you might want to keep that in mind. Now in terms of installation, Windows is not the worst thing in the world, it holds your hand, it's accessible, it's easy, if not, you know, a bit patronizing to the user, but it's for grandpas. And this part of the installation starts at about 1520, and it ends, I believe, somewhere around 18 minutes. Oh, 17. My bad. So I think it's safe to say that a decently paced Windows install is probably going to set you back 15 to 20 minutes, but of course your mileage will vary. Don't mind the fact that this is a pirated version of Windows 11. Now we are on to the beautiful Linux Mint, and if you notice, the installation is actually pretty simple, and immediately we are off to the races. So let's see how quick this is. In this department, the victory easily goes to Linux Mint, the installation taking a mere 7 minutes, immediately the USB stick can be used as a live environment for whatever you need, and not only that, there's no useless data telemetry settings to sift through. So down here in Linux Mint land, we got this introduction screen, which very nicely welcomes you to the whole system. You got all of these little tips on how to launch and use your utilities and applications on your system. Also fucking epic documentation in case you're confused. And then over here on the bar area, you know, you got your typical Windows-like taskbar with your system reports. And then you got your update manager right there. Let's click into that. Even gives you a neat explanation for how to use it. UI seems pretty simple and then it shows all of the packages on your system to be updated. Here's your notification bay, you don't want to get that shit out of here, just clear it, fuck off, right? Got your uh, network settings, which is, they're, honestly, they're admittedly pretty simple, so nice. Seems easy to set up. Got your volume rocker here, also extremely easy to set up, and you even got your little sound settings right here. And if you want to uh, show your desktop right here, there's the button on the bottom right. And here's your menu, which is very reminiscent of the Windows Start menu, but it's also really snappy, it's super easy to use, and it categorizes all of your applications very neatly. So, I mean, I'm not complaining. Down in the Windows Kingdom, we're gonna check out this one Start menu, and I mean, you know, it's, it's alright. Alright, it works. 
I mean, you got your apps here, and then you can see your pinned, and show all applications. The start menu was never terribly designed. I don't like that it's in the center, though, which, that's just brain dead. It's just stupid. I don't know why Microsoft did that, trying to alienate their, uh, you know, their audience. Windows Search still sucks dick, of course. Then we got your typical uh, taskbar shenanigans with your tray and shit, your network, and I do like this idea of this um, little quick bar here. Here's your volume slider, of course. Very fun. Yeah, so this quick bar or quick applications or whatever these are called, um, quick settings. These quick settings up here, honestly, I like the idea. I think it was a cool feature. So that's a plus on Windows this part. And over here, we got your time and your notifications. It's, you know, it's pretty run of the mill. So let's head on over to the file manager just so we can see the differences between the Linux and Windows file system. So let's go to our piece. Oh. Yeah, I forgot to mention, um, the virtual machine for Windows actually completely fucking broke and I had to install the entire thing from the beginning. Yeah, complete reinstallation. It was a very fun, very fun uh, experience for me and I loved the fact that I had to do all of that again. It really, it really made my hopes high. I was, uh, I wasn't that angry. Not that angry. I, I mean, okay, I was a little angry. Yeah, I was pissed. Anyways, as for the files, the C drive in Windows is pretty similar to basically the root directory in Linux, and program files in Windows I would say are analogous to slash user slash bin. They both contain a bunch of your applications, so. And then your home directory in Windows is kind of just the same as your home directory in Linux, your home slash your username. Let's browse the web on Windows and, you know, let's just see how it performs. Now, keep in mind these VMs both have the same specs, so they should perform similarly um, you know, in theory. Let's go to my channel. It's a... Uh, okay, it's taking a bit. It's it's not too slow, but it's it's taking a bit, right? It's taking its time. He's, uh, he's a bit... He's a bit past his prime years. Let's uh, click on Linux. Search me up. Linux. Okay. Uh, fuck you, Linux Tree Center, by the way. Fuck you. Linux T... Oh, wow. That loaded a bit quick. Okay, what about the video? Oh. Okay, well, Linux is faster, I guess, in web browsing. That's... Okay, let's 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 get some applications, right? I'm fiending for for something to do, for something to use on my computer. So let's open the Windows Store. Uh, good things are coming your way. Yeah, yeah. I fucking I hope so, right? Of course. Okay, we're in. Supposedly, it's taken a really long while to load. Actually, I'm. It took about you know five minutes for that to load in actuality. And the application is also kind of slow, which I don't like. It looks nice though. Let's get VLC. It's a good utility. It's it's oh, oh it's a uh, it's useful, right? It's taken a long time. Holy shit! Yeah, if you're wondering, this is the actual amount of time it takes for this to load. It yeah, it took about two minutes for the install button to pop up. So that's swell. Okay, let's just do it. Press install, and let's see how it's going on the Linux side of things while this is installing. The VLC that you see in the top left is in real time. Let's open the software manager. It's generating cache. That takes a little while, of course. While it's doing that, uh, how's your day? Like and subscribe. Hope you're having a good day. Okay, we're in. So we're in the software manager for Linux. Let's, uh, you know, let's give VLC Media Player just like in Windows to make an apt and fair comparison. By the way, the software manager in Linux is actually pretty speedy. As you can see, it's super easy to navigate it. It's got all the shit you need. It's got featured. It's got categories and everything. It's simple. It looks nice, but it works, right? I mean, what more do you need? Let's get VLC. Let's press install, and here are all the packages it's going to install. So let's put in the password, which is Timmy, and it's installing. So let's see how long this takes. Keep in mind, the top left is in real time. I'm not lying about this. Will uh, Linux win the battle of installing VLC? Uh, yeah, it will. It just installed it. And it works perfectly. Well, uh, what the fuck, Windows? What the actual fuck? And just to add to Windows' a shitty track record so far, the system just degraded for some reason and became completely unusable after trying to install VLC. I checked the task manager and realized that the system was spiking to unfathomable degrees for some reason. I don't know why. This is with six virtual cores, of course. Using two gigabytes of memory on idle, then I opened the store again, and the system spiked to 100% CPU usage. Absolutely amazing. 
So yeah, awesome. Bill Gates is a fucking idiot. So then, how about Office applications on uh, Linux? Well, the built-in suite for Linux Mint, LibreOffice, performs quite well and has equivalents for every single one of the Microsoft Office uh, applications. So I was like, okay, let's go ahead. And then I started writing and I wrote a very nice, uh, well, I don't know what to call this, of course, whatever. And then I used the Excel equivalent and I did some good calculations and then I made a great presentation that you should show all of your friends, of course. And then I was like, okay, let's draw something. So I drew something I think should be on the front of every museum. And then I was like, what about some video editing? And I made something that I regret. It starts with After the Windows shit show, I opted to see what performance was like on Linux, and it was using half of the RAM and next to 0% CPU. So then, I went into Firefox and proceeded to open over 19 windows, each playing a video on YouTube. And it barely, barely hit 50% while playing all of those videos. You can't make this fucking shit up. As for video editing on Windows, I just didn't see it fit to pursue it any further because it was a fucking death sentence with that performance on the virtual machine, and I knew it would immediately crash, so there's just no point. As for the Office applications, everybody knows how Microsoft Office functions and works, and I showed it off on Linux because most people don't really know what an Office suite looks like on Linux, and I'm sure most people aren't even aware that it works perfectly fine, so I thought it was fit to show that anyways. Um, yeah, so here's a basic play-by-play -play between Windows and Linux, at least between virtual machines. I'm probably going to do it on bare metal with uh, two identical kind of setups at some point, but that's going to take a lot of moolah, so, you know, you might want to help me finance that. You actually don't have to give me any money as long as you view my videos. That's enough. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Thank you.